While at a very fundamental level, everything on the computer is represented by numbers, we really need more than just our numeric types in order to be able to do interesting things in a program. So what are some of the other types that we have access to in Scala? We've seen int and double. Another type, which in some ways is remarkably simple, is the type called Boolean. Now Boolean only has two values to it, true and false. So anything of type Boolean will either be true or it will be false. There are no other alternatives. Lots of programming utilizes the Booleans. We'll see this later when we talk about conditionals and we have to do Boolean logic. There's a lot of power that goes with that even though this is kind of the simplest type that carries any information because it only has two basic options. The other thing that we like to be able to do is to, for example, represent of letters and words. Individual letters are the type care and we type the literals for these using single quotes. So if I put an A inside of single quotes that gives me a character and you can see the type here is care just like the boolean. Hopefully you're noticing that all of the types in Scala start with capital letters. Uh, that is something that as a style issue that we like to preserve. All of the built-in types do it when we get to the point where we make our own types, we will do the same. What can you do with characters? Well, it turns out that at a fundamental level, characters are just numbers, and we can ask what the numeric value of A is. It also turns out that because they are just numbers, you can do math on them. So A plus 1. Well, since A was 97, A plus 1 was 98. That makes sense. But when you add something to a character, or if I subtract something from a character, it I don't get back a character, I get back an int. Well, we already know how to do these types of conversions. If I take that integer, and I want to convert it back to a character, I can call the toCare method on the integer. And as you would expect, a plus 1 gives you b, it's less obvious that a minus one gives you a backtick. Um, but you have the ability to do mathematical operations on characters. Even if you do it between two characters, once again, you get back uh, an integer type. But the care can only represent single characters. We often want to represent more than that. And for that, there is the string type. So a string is a collection of characters with a particular length to it. In the very first program that we wrote, we included a string like this. String literals are denoted by the fact that they use double quotes. So the single quote is for a character literal, the double quote is for a string literal. Of course they can have different numbers of characters in them, whereas if you try to make a character with more than one character in it, Scala is not happy with that because that's not a valid character. What can you do with strings? We saw how you can kind of do math with characters. What happens if I do math with strings? Well, it turns out plus just does concatenation. So it appends things and makes a, a bigger string. You cannot do subtraction. I guess we can say, what happens if I were to add a number instead of a string? Well, it converts the number to a string and then it does the concatenation, whether that number is an integer or a double. You cannot do subtraction. So high minus absolutely anything that I type here will be an error. It's invalid, doesn't matter whether it's an integer, a string, or a double, you can't do that. You also can't divide. It doesn't make any sense to divide into strings. However, it does make sense to multiply. And you can take a string and multiply it by a number, and it repeats that string that many times. So times three gives us the same string repeated three times. Another way of playing with types in Scala, in fact, another type in and of itself, is a type called the tuple. And what a tuple does is just a combination of other types. So if I had the values 
pi and uh, the number 42, I can put those in parentheses and separate them by commas, and I get the tuple. Now note the type here. The type is string int, which makes sense because we have a string and an int, and its value is the values that we had inside of our original tuple. You don't have to just make two tuples. We can make three tuples or four tuples. And all the types don't have to be different. Yeah, I could throw another int in there. So this is kind of the standard way of making tuples is just a parenthesized list of, of values and it has a particular type associated with it and that is just the collection of the other types. Another syntax that Scala allows for creating tuples that becomes significant at certain points is to use a little association arrow. Now this can only be used to make two tuples. If you use two arrows at the same time you get a two tuple that is contained inside of a two tuple. And it does not give you back a three tuple which is what we got up here. Once I have one of these tuples, so let's take, uh, we'll start with res 25, this one here. How could I get values out of that? Well, it turns out the tuple has methods in it, which are named underscore one, underscore two, underscore three, for however many fields it has. So underscore one gives us back high, two gives us 42, etc. How would I get out the 42 from this tuple, from res28? So res28 underscore 1 is that, and underscore 2 is that. But I want just the 42. Well, turns out you can string together your method calls. So underscore 1 dot underscore 2 means that I get this, and then I pull out the second element of that, and that is how I can get out the 42. So this is a basic introduction to a number of the other types. Uh, most of the basic types in Scala, the things that we're going to use a lot, have been covered here, as well as basic ways to manipulate each of them.